Ladies and gentlemen, keep this under your hat. The secret word tonight is chair. C-H-A-I-R. Really? You bet your life! Elgin American. Creators of America's most beautiful compact, smartest cigarette cases, finest dresser sets, presents Groucho Marx in the Elgin American show, You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here's that sterling Elgin American, the one, the only... Groucho! Is he back again? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again, happy to report we're starting our third season for the same sponsor, Elgin American Compacts. I've saved my money all summer, and tonight we have $1,000 for one of our couples. George Fannerman, who's first to try for us? Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a pair of newlyweds, and here they are, Mr. and Mrs. Roland Carr, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters. Do you bet your life? You need to say the secret word at any time we're talking, you'll win $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Newlyweds, eh? Uh... How newlywed are you, man? July 31st. I was talking to your husband uh, there. <laughs> Rollin, does she always answer for you? No, I don't always. <laughs> Gene Carr, don't you ever let him say anything? What'd you get him, in front of a cigar store? <laughs> no. Chatterbox, that's you, Rollin. Uh, <laughs> how old are you? I'm 31. And what's, what's your age, Gene? 30. And where are you from? Jamestown, North Dakota. Rollin, what's your home place? Huh? New York City. You live in different towns, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you each go back home, I hope you'll be writing to each other. Huh? <laughs> what kind of work do you do, Rollin? I work in a bank. You work in a bank, eh? And judging who's been doing the talking, your wife must be the teller. <laughs> Just what do you do in the bank? Well, I'm the operations officer. You operate in the bank? <laughs> have you got your knife with you? <laughs> now, I've always en envied you people who work in banks. You have such a short day. What do you do after 3 o'clock, Roland? Well, after the bank is closed, when we do our hardest work. I see, yeah. <laughs> is the uh, president of the bank aware of this? Yeah. <laughs> after the bank is closed, too. Oh, you're all in cahoots, I think. <laughs> well, that's one way for a young bridegroom to put away a lot of money, work nights in a bank. <laughs> Jean, how, do, how did you meet this old uh, banker here? Huh? I used to work in the same bank. After hours or during the regular hours? <laughs> now, since you're newlyweds, we have some appropriate wedding gifts from our sponsor. George? For Jean, Elgin American's beautiful dresser set in jewelry's bronze with a look of gold. And isn't that engraved floral design lovely, Jean? Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very much. And, Rollin, we'd like you to have this slim, sleek, sterling silver cigarette case by Elgin American, handsomely engraved. Uh, very swell. Where did you two uh, kids go on your honeymoon? We went to San Francisco and Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. That's an ideal honeymoon. Which one of you went to Frisco, huh? <laughs> Now, Jean, how many of your old boyfriends have you seen since you've been married? I haven't seen a single one. Just the married ones, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Remember that, Rollin? You see how easy it is to trap your wife? <laughs> Jean, can you honestly say that marriage is as perfect as you'd always dreamed? Well, no. We have a few little problems. Small problems? Maybe. What are their names, eh? <laughs> Do you plan on having a family, Rollin? Yes, we do. About uh, how many? Oh, about two. Well, you know, being a banker, you know you're going to have to consult the other stockholder huh? <laughs> before you can declare dividends. Huh? <laughs> now, Gene, do you, do you think Rollin uh, will make a good father? Yes, he will. Well, why are you so uh, certain? Children like him, and he's very gentle and understanding with them. Do you have anything to add to that, Rollin? Huh? No, I can't add anything to that. Just going to stand there and simper, huh? <laughs> now, as a recent Benedict, what are some of the advantages of married life? Well, it uh, shows a man the right direction in which to go. You mean she's already told you where to go? <laughs> well, 
Well, right, you make a charming and a very amiable couple, and I know you'll make wonderful parents. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a thousand dollars. Fenneman, you've had a whole summer to practice what you're going to say. Speak your piece. Young Mrs. Chesser went to her dresser to fix up her hair real pretty. When she got there, the dresser was bare. What? No Welsh and American dresser set? No! What a pity! But she rushed right down to her favorite store and bought the smartest dresser set they had. What kind was it? <laughs> Naturally! Elgin American dresser sets are exquisitely designed. Have jewel-like finish, precision craftsmanship throughout. Have nylon bristles, specially ground mirrors. They're the most fashionable decorator touch you could give a bedroom. They look like a million dollars, but cost as little as fourteen ninety-five. And if you're extra thrifty, there's Elgin American's companion line of American beauty dresser sets that start at only seven ninety-five. Here's the big, impressive gift to thrill anyone. And don't let your dresser, your guest room, go bare another day. Tomorrow, buy these values you'll value for years. Dresser sets by Elgin American. <laughs> Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,000 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the program. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? We picked song. Songs from uh, recent Broadway musicals? Yeah. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Ten dollars. All right. This song is from South Pacific. Give me the title of it. Valley High. Valley High is right. And they're on their way, Doctor. They have thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of your thirty dollars will you try now? We'll bet twenty. Let's see if you can identify this tune from Kiss Me Kate. Play, Jerry. True to you, darling. Always true to you, darling, in my fashion. They're really on their way. They have $50. That shows he's a groom. Now, here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to uh, risk? Uh, we're about 35. Here's another song from South Pacific. What's the title of it? Some Enchanted Some Evening. Some Enchanted Evening. They're really climbing now. They have $85. You have now climbed the Mount McKinley of $85, and there's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much are you going to try? We'll bet uh, $70. $70. Ethel Maiman sang this song, and Annie, get your gun. What's the name of it? There's no business like no show business. No business like show business is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $155. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from Elgin American Compact. Stick around now. You might still get the crack at the big question. Groucho, our next couple has been in a waiting room off stage. Perhaps they'll say the secret word. It's chair. We invited some wrestlers and some librarians to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected librarian Mary Horan and wrestler Terry McGinnis. And here they come. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for Elgin American Compacts. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking... I'll fork over $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. The wrestler and the librarian, eh? Miss uh, Mary Horan, at which library do you work? In? The Central Library, the Los Angeles Public Library. Mm -hmm. And uh, how's business there? Eh? Quiet? Yes, very quiet. A little joke I bet you always use when somebody asks you how's business. Oh, eh? uh, yes. How's business? Very quiet. Very good. I thought maybe things were humming since you do a volume business. <laughs> Bone crusher, Terry McGinnis, huh? Are you married? Uh, yes, sir. How'd you meet your wife? Did you go up to her to dance and say, may I have the next half, Nelson? <laughs> For our show, I met her in Australia. And, and what um, were you doing there? I was there wrestling. What, a kangaroo? <laughs> I have wrestled a kangaroo. Have you? <laughs> Isn't it difficult to wrestle a kangaroo? How do you talk business before the match, huh? <laughs> that, uh... That we don't do, uh, Grasso. With a kangaroo. <laughs> you can't strike me. I'm sitting down. You know. <laughs> I said I'm an elderly man and I wear glasses. Huh? 
Librarian, you've been very quiet. What do you, where do you think you are, on the public landing? <laughs> How's business? Very slow. Very slow. <laughs> well, it's changing. It was a little quiet a while ago. <laughs> now, Mary, how did you happen to become a librarian? Did you start out as a bookie? <laughs> Say, you're a pretty good-looking gal to be working in the library. I never know that girl like that. Are you, are you married, uh, Mary? No, I'm not. You're not, huh? You're a speculating librarian? <laughs> what kind of a man are you looking for, Mary? Uh... Oh, a nice, quiet, companionable sort of person who's well-read and uh, likes good cultural things and good-looking and about six feet. You don't want a man. You want Dr. Elliot's six-foot shelf, huh? <laughs> Wrestler, uh, McGinnis, uh, haven't you got a ring name like Gorgeous Sam or The Blimp or Derriere Dan or something? Huh? No, what do they call you in the ring? And remember, we're on the radio. <laughs> they call me Irish Terry McGinnis. They call you Irish Terry McGinnis? What part of Romania do you hail from? Huh? <laughs> Now, Miss Horan, let's get back to you. It's much safer. Now, there's a big article about me in the October Radio Mirror magazine. Suppose I breeze down to your library next Sunday afternoon. Would you help me find the magazine? No, I wouldn't. Well, that's not very cooperative. Why not? Well, the public library is not open on Sunday. <laughs> well, I'll be bound, huh? <laughs> How's business, then? Very quiet. Very quiet. <laughs> well, you're holding your own, anyhow. <laughs> Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Horan, as a librarian, do you like to wrestle? I never had wrestled. <laughs> well, maybe that's why you're not married, huh? <laughs> Well, Miss Horan, here's something I know you'll fall in love with instantly. George, tell her about it. Well, it's a luxurious sterling silver compact by Elgin American. It's hand engraved with a 14 karat gold picture frame border. How do you like it, Miss Horan? Very beautiful. And for our wrestler, something his wife will thoroughly appreciate. A sterling silver compact just like it by Elgin American. I know she'll love it. Now, tell me, glamorous Gus, how much do you weigh, huh? 240 pounds, six foot two. All that meat and no vegetables. <laughs> Except the cauliflower ear. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Terry, there's an ugly rumor going around that some professional wrestling matches are fixed. Is there anything to this? Absolutely not. That's an ugly rumor. <laughs> How many ugly rumors have you wrestled in your time? <laughs> now let's play You Bet Your Life. If you can beat our other two couples in the quiz, you'll get a crack at the $1,000 question. Fenneman, remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The newlyweds won $155. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Paper money. Nicknames for paper money. Here's your first question. How much uh, will you bet? Five dollars. Five dollars. How much money is a grand? Thousand dollars. One thousand dollars is right. They're on their way. They have twenty-five dollars. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of your twenty-five dollars will you try? Ten. Ten. All right. How much money is a fin? Five. Five dollars is correct. <laughs> Now they have $35. You now have $35, and here's your third question. How much of the 35 will you attempt? Ten. Ten. Let's spend a little more. <laughs> Let's spend 25 All right, 25 All right with you, Mary. How much money is the sawbuck? Ten dollars. Ten dollars is correct. <laughs> They're on their way. They have $60. All right, you've got $60. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 60 are you going to risk? $50. $50. Is that all right with you, Mary? All right. How much money is a case note? How much money is a what? A case note. C A S E. $50? No, it's a hundred dollars. No, I, I'm sorry. It's one dollar. They wind up with ten dollars. Good luck from Elgin American Compacts. Now, in just one minute, our last couple will play You Bet Your Life, and then we know it gets a $1,000 question. Benjamin, now it's your turn. All right, Groucho, listen. Those are waves caressing the shores of Mallorca, the most romantic island in the Mediterranean. Here on Mallorca, after searching the corners of the world, 
Elgin American has found the most perfect pearls ever created by man. Pearls worthy of the Elgin American name. Now, these pearls can be yours. Rich, lustrous, glowing with a deep sea beauty all their own. Elgin American pearls are perfectly matched, superbly styled, with glamorous, luxurious clasps, and fashioned into wonderful single, double, and triple strand necklaces, as well as ropes, chokers, and graceful earrings. Presented in their beautiful jewel and gift boxes, Elgin American pearls are truly the most magnificent gift you can give or receive. Yet, prices start at just $2. The finest simulated pearls at any price. Buy them tomorrow. Treasure their opalescent beauty forever. Wear them proudly. For these are Elgin American pearls. <laughs> Now then, we soon know who's going to earn the most money and get the chance at the $1,000 question. George, who's leading so far? Well, the newlyweds are leading with $155. And here's our final couple. They've been in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know the secret word is chair. Our studio audience selected a druggist and a housewife to be next. And here they come. Mrs. Margaret Harvey and Mr. Quentin Snavely meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Welcome for Elgin American Compacts. If you say the secret word at any time we're talking, I'll hand over $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A druggist and a housewife, eh? Mr. Quentin uh, Snavely? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You're the druggist, I presume. That's right, sir. <laughs> Where are you from, Doc? Santa Monica. Mrs. Margaret Harvey. Uh, what's your hometown? Philadelphia. Quentin, uh, are you married? Yes, I am. My wife first became interested in me in a drugstore. She fell in love with my picture on a bottle of iodine. <laughs> Now, aspirin tablet, as a, as a druggist, just what do you do? What do I do with an aspirin tablet? No, what? <laughs> well, there are only so many things you can do with an aspirin tablet. I say, as, as a druggist, just what do you do? Huh? I fill prescriptions. Don't you sell anything besides drugs in your drugstore? Oh, yes. We, uh, we sell football tickets and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice combination. Aspirin and football tickets, huh? <laughs> Uh, Imagine a fella has arthritis and comes in and gets a football ticket, huh? <laughs> what does your husband do, M uh, Mrs. Harvey? He fills crates in a warehouse. Fills crates in a warehouse? <laughs> fills them with what? Well, anything they have there to fill them with. <laughs> well, that seems like a pretty simple job. <laughs> Just grab anything around there and throw it in a box. Huh? <laughs> I don't think we're quite clear on this. <laughs> After he fills this, these crates with this debris, <laughs> what happens to these crates? Well, they ship them out. <laughs> how, did, how did you meet him? Was he throwing you in one of the crates? In the... I met him in a cemetery. You met him in a cemetery? Yes. He just went from one box to another. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Harvey, uh, was, was he alive when you met him? <laughs> Very much so. Mm -hmm. what, was he, what was this ghoul doing out there in the cemetery? Well, he was a grave digger. <laughs> he sounds like a lot of fun, this kid. <laughs> what were you doing in the cemetery, Mrs. Harvey? Huh? Well, I always made a shortcut through the cemetery. <laughs> you made a shortcut and ran into him? <laughs> Epitaph. You had a hobby of reading epitaphs? Yes. I mean, in the evening by the fire, you mean? Yeah, I home from work. I used to cut through there and I read the epitaph. I see. Yes. And? Was his name on one of them? Or... <laughs> well, that's a nifty way to start a romance. <laughs> so, what was he doing? Well, when I was reading on the epitaph, I saw the picture of this man, and he was a gruesome looking fella, and I said, gee, you're ugly. And as that somebody says, so are you. <laughs> and when I came to, there were three grave diggers standing around me. Are you sure you, you weren't watching Hamlet? Huh? <laughs> these grave diggers were explaining what had happened. I see. They and you said, knocked them dead, huh? Now, this one grave digger was in the grave eating his lunch. When he... <laughs> That's what they call a box lunch. Huh? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I'm going to lock my door tonight when I get home. <laughs> so? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm not being rude. I'm just trying to find well, out when, more. Well, when I did wake up, I was sitting in one of those chairs, you know, if they had me send it back. Mrs. Harvey, you said chair, and that's the secret word, and that means you win $100 right now, and there it is. Congratulations. <laughs> now, where were we when the chair broke, huh? Well, uh, he said he felt very sorry for what he had said to me. And then he threw a wreath on you, I suppose? Huh? <laughs> Doc, uh, tell me, how much does your uh, average prescription cost? They start from 50 cents up, but the average prescription is about $2. Mm-hmm. And how much do the ingredients cost you? <laughs> Trade figures. 20 cents up. What do you mean, up? Up to 22? And... <laughs> you mean you have the nerve to charge two bucks for something that only costs you 20 cents? Well, we have our overhead to figure in, our rent, and uh, the knowledge and experience in filling those prescriptions. Well, that's a pretty big pill to swallow. <laughs> You know, I've often wondered, how important is the soda fountain to a drugstore? Does it bring in much business? Well, it, it brings in the trade, and they buy other things in the store. Well, that sounds logical, I guess. <laughs> you have a pumpernickel sandwich on liverwurst, then. Eh? <laughs> and a banana split, they stagger over to the drug department and buy enough bicarbonate to cover the whole rent, I suppose. <laughs> well, I've got a prescription for both of you. Take thou these gifts from our sponsor. This is Harvey Pearls for you. Elgin American's beautiful pearls. They're the finest pearls made by man, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. They're beautiful. And Druggist Snavely, the perfect gift for your wife. Elgin American's exclusive heart-shaped compact that's definitely different. It's jeweler's bronze that looks like gold. That's the best seller in our store. Ha really. <laughs> ha, there's a man. <laughs> Tell me, do you ever have emergencies in your drugstore other than your wife coming in and catching you shaking up a blonde for a bromo? <laughs> I mean, shaking up a bromo for a blonde? <laughs> Let's forget the whole thing, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Harvey, what kind of first aid equipment do you keep around the house? Oh, I have iodine, corn plasters, bunion plasters. <laughs> you have a lot of foot trouble, I take it, huh? <laughs> That's from a hot putting it through that cemetery. <laughs> what else? Just iodine, corn plasters, foot plasters, well, I have no he- arch supports? I have headache powders. Headache powders. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to meet that husband of yours sometime. <laughs> Are there any items missing from that list that uh, she should have in her home, Mr. Snavely? Well, she didn't mention a tourniquet, and everyone should have one. A tourniquet, huh? You mean like a tennis tourniquet? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, a, what's a tourniquet, huh? Well, a tourniquet is um, a apparatus that you put around the arm. It's mm-hmm. full of blood. It stops the blood? Is that good? I'm trying to get mine started And he's stopping it. <laughs> What is that for? A snake bite? That's right What does it cost? It costs $4.95 Just for a tiny kit? No, that's part of a snake bite kit That's the whole kit The whole kit? How old is the kit? Huh? <laughs> Now, Doc, suppose Mrs. Harvey came into your drugstore and told you she just had an argument with her husband and she wanted to buy a hundred sleeping pills and a pound of arsenic. What, uh, what would you do, huh? I'd be suspicious. <laughs> You're a pretty shrewd cookie, Doc. Eh? <laughs> but tell me, w- would you sell it to her? Not without a prescription. I see. You have no objection to her knocking off her husband as long as she has a prescription. <laughs> Well, you're a very interesting couple, and, Doc, I've been ribbing you druggist, but I didn't mean it, really. The druggist on the corner is an American institution. He's been keeping me hopping for years. <laughs> now, Mrs. Harvey and Doc, you're going to play your bet your life, the Elgin American game, for $1,000. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, you get the chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The newlyweds are still ahead with $155. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? Nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes. Yes. Well, you ought to be good at that after those uh, obituaries and epitaphs. Huh? <laughs> now, here's your first question. How much will it be? How much are you going to bet? $10. $10? All right. How many bags of wool did the black sheep have? Take a guess. Three. Three is right. If you got right enough to bet. 
Well, they're on their way with $30. dollars you sneaked in under the wire that time. Now, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of your $30 dollars will you try? We'll try, uh... 20 20 What was the name of the kid that ran around town in his nightshirt, rapping at windows to see if all the other kiddies were in bed? Take a guess. Ah, uh, the bell is tolled. I'm, I'm sorry. It was Wee Willie Winky. Oh. They now have $10. That is pretty tough one. Now, here's your third question. You have $10 left. How much are you going to try now? Who bet five? What was Miss Muffet eating when the spider frightened her? What was she eating? Curds and whey. Curds and and whey is right. (laughs) Well, they're on their way again. They have $15. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 are you going to try? Ten. All right, ten. What skinny guy could eat no fat? Jack Spratt. Jack Spratt could eat no fat. And they wind up with a grand total of $25. And that means the newlyweds with $155 get the chance of the $1,000 question. The name Elgin American means the very finest quality, designing, finish, and craftsmanship. The best value. In exquisite compacts, gorgeous simulated pearls, magnificent dresser sets, Magic action lighters, wondrous lighter cases, distinguished cigarette cases, handsome military sets, fascinating musical humidors. Your favorite store has a complete assortment of the newest Elgin American styles right now. See them. And for your own proud use, for thrilling prestige gifts, always buy Elgin American. And here's the winning couple, Groucho, the newlyweds. Well, back again to try for $1,000, eh? Good luck. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so talk it over thoroughly, and no help in the audience, please. Think of your map now. Which of the 48 states extends the closest to the North Pole? Which state of the 48? What answer have you two decided upon? Wisconsin. No, I, I'm sorry. The correct answer is the Lake of the Woods projection in Minnesota is the northernmost point in the United States. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. But for beating the other couples, Groucho, they receive the new amazing Apollo 16-millimeter movie projector to show Hollywood sound movies and moving pictures you take yourself. And in addition, you receive those lovely gifts from Elgin American and you won $155 in cash. That makes it a very profitable evening all around. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. The Elgin American Show, You Bet Your Life, is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Remember, next week's big question pays $1,500. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx, presented by the creators of America's most beautiful compact, smartest cigarette cases, and finest dresser sets, Elgin American. Good night, folks. Have you looked at your compact lately? 